people throw the term existential crisis around a lot, but that was, to me, the biggest existential crisis of my life. Hey folks, so uh, the video you're about to watch is about a condition called focal dystonia. Victor Wooten, Julian Lodge, and, and the focus of this video, Charlie Parr, all have this condition. You've probably heard of a writer's cramp, it's in the same camp. It's actually a neurological condition that affects the muscle groups um, needed to perform a given task. It's also called focal task specific dystonia. Musicians just call it musician's dystonia. Athletes call it the yips. So in this video, Charlie talks about how he discovered even having dystonia, the process in treating it. He also grabs his guitar and he shows you very specific examples of how he's worked through his dystonia and how he's had to modify his playing. Oh, and at the end, there's actually a call out for a resonator guitar builders. He has some ideas of how you can modify this thing in the build to not only help people who, who have focal dystonia, um, but just kind of anybody who plays a resonator guitar. So stick around, it's a long one. There's something in it for everybody though, um, whether you're struggling with vocal dystonia or just struggling with the guitar. Charlie Parr is a is a champion of, of, of seeing obstacles and making friends out of them. So, hope you enjoy it. Want some coffee? I have some. Oh, you have some? Yeah, I've got it. Is it handy? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to make you do stuff if you don't want to do stuff. Welcome to the... Let me get you a cleaner cup than <laughs> I want some coffee in a dirty cup. Let's take two. <laughs> no. Thank you. This is perfect. Welcome to the talk show. What do you think of the new... <laughs> the new format? The new format. <laughs> you know, I have a video, somewhere in a video, a clip of you barely talking about focal dystonia. And you bring it up like you just woke up one day. That's what it felt like. And it was like... <clears throat> That's what it felt like. I remember... I remember... Like I used to do, I used to do shows like every week. You're talking about the brew house shows? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we'd quickly reach this tempo that if I wanted to play anything slow, I'd play it early in the evening, maybe first couple songs, you know. And then we'd like very quickly kind of reach this, this, this tempo where people seem to like the music to be at, you know. And we'd stay there for the rest of the night. These were three and a half hour sets at a tempo that people could dance to. You know, and there were, it was a blast. I, I loved it. I loved every second. Of it. At one point, I noticed that, you know, people talk about being in the pocket. I remember noticing that I never felt that way anymore. I felt like in I was... In the pocket? Like, right, in the pocket. I never felt it. I had I'd stopped feeling that feeling. And I started to feel like it was work. Like, to, to maintain a rhythm that used to feel like I didn't even have to think about it, now felt like like work to me. Then one morning I woke up and my hand didn't work anymore. It was, it was like, I literally woke up like this and, mm -hmm. and it, you know, like what the hell, you know, shake it out, shake it out, yeah. you know, try to play. And as soon as I touched the guitar, you know, my hand would just like curl up like it was allergic to playing the guitar, you know? Wow. Um, and, yeah, I can't even describe to you the sense of panic that I felt. Yeah, because you know? you're well into your career. You're you're working musician. I'm, like... I'm at that point. I don't have a job. I'm gigging out of town every single weekend. Yeah. Doing these weekly shows here in town. Like what year ish was? I'm it? Talking about 2007, eight, yeah. somewhere in there. I remember yeah. because it was right around the time that Jack Rose passed, and okay. all this shit went down. Yeah. Because I kind of associated the two things in my head. Oh my God. For some reason, like my friend died, I no longer can play the guitar. <laughs> Everyone assumed that it was repetitive stress syndrome. Right. It didn't really look like repetitive stress syndrome, you know, because it was so specific. Yeah. You know, it doesn't hurt any other. It doesn't really hurt. There's no pain in my arm. There's no pain associated with it. It was just like uh, involuntary contraction. You right. Know? So... That was confusing. It's like you don't have pain. It doesn't always hurt. You can still do other things and it's fine. It's just this, you know. That's yeah. starting to look like something else. Uh, and it, it was like, it was a, almost a full year later. Somebody sent me an email talking about focal dystonia. Have you thought about this? Even that was the first time I heard the words. It was like a full, almost a full year after this happened to me. Wow. Um, and I went to a doctor, and, and there's no, you know, 
at that time anyway there's no like the diagnosis for it it's kind of like the parkinson's diagnosis you know can you hold your hand still like what is it what does it look like when you have these symptoms well it's very specific i'm sitting down to play the guitar everything is fine i go to do what i always do and everything stops you know literally my hand curls into a fist and so the doctor that i saw at the time is talking about okay well you shouldn't do that I'm like that's that's not an option i can't not do that that's right. the thing that i do you 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 can't be correct there's got to be another way you know i was literally panicking i mean yeah. you know people throw the term existential crisis around a lot but that was to me the biggest existential crisis of my life yeah the thing that i had done since i was eight yeah is now gone you know? right and the way when i did some research about it and i talked to the doctor that, that was kind of learning at the same time i was was it a duluth doctor or it was somewhere a, special it was a minneapolis doctor okay so i'm learning all this stuff and at the same time i'm trying to figure out how to still play so move the guitar and that worked for a second oh you know, get get a massage and that worked for a second yeah but then it would come back so all these things like this like i can fool like i, I realized i can fool my brain for just a minute yeah and as soon as it realizes what i'm trying to do that's not going to work so that you know and and the interesting thing you know you sent me that Julian Lodge video yeah. about about this and he you know he put it better than I think anybody has you know your brain is trying to help you yes. be more efficient and what it's actually doing is taking away skills that you need to do what you do yes my entire hand kind of turned into a club my fingers stopped operating individually you know and and started operating as a as a more of a flipper um and so I, f I, found a, I found a way that I could, because like, I went through, like, I try, I, I'll just try to do a flat, I'll try to flat pick this. I'll try to learn how to flat pick. Because if you go back and listen to Charlie Patton and Blind Lambert Jefferson, that music could easily, you know, mm -hmm. you could easily flat pick. You know, there's, there's whole chords in there, there's single note runs. Yeah. You know, you could do that with a flat pick. Right, and so I'm, I'm like buying flat picks of all different sizes and configure giant ones, you know, little tiny ones, ones with ridges on, <laughs> you know, the, the the stuff you like stick it to your thumb with, you know, just trying everything, and it would work for a second, and then it would stop working. Wow. Um, I this finger, which has always been like the main finger for me. Really? Yeah. This was the this was the finger. The yeah. thumb and this finger. This finger was more of a rhythm kind of sure. catcher. You know, this yep. finger usually didn't play, and this finger never played. My pinky would always anchor on the guitar, which is using it in a form. Right. You still depend on it. Yeah. Um, so with this finger completely out of commission, I started trying to learn how to do melody with my pointer finger and and using my thumb. The rest mm -hmm. of my the rest of my hand would curl up while I played so I could play like this but this like it would hurt like by the end of the set I had marks in my palm oh my god because it would my hand would be white because my it would just like dig and dig and dig and it was like involuntary in, I'm all, yeah my brain it's a stress trying response. to get yeah. the rest of my fingers to cooperate you know and be the flipper you know yeah and and all the while I'm like moving the guitar around you know, playing a classical style, playing it back here, moving my hand around. And I made this up. I don't know if this is good or not that I did this, but I made this up. Like, like remembering what, what a clawhammer banjo player from Eastern Kentucky was telling a friend of mine once. You know, in clawhammer, your, your fingers are not doing anything. Just hold them like you're holding onto a credit card or yep. something. You just yeah. don't move them like this. And your wrist doesn't move. Mm -hmm. All the power comes from here. Mm -hmm. It's like a drive wheel and a train, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. That's what moves. Not any of this. Yeah. You know, all the power comes from back here. And this guy said, and the words he used were, the farther away you can put the power, the better off you'll be in the long run. 
Hmm. So I'm thinking about that. What if what if I what if I imagine all the muscles that are being used are as far away from my guitar as possible? I'm directing my 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 mental focus is directed up in here somewhere. So yeah. maybe my brain will forget. Yeah. About the flipper. Yeah. And so but the thing was it actually started to work because what you want, you know, when you're playing I think any instrument is you want the most relaxed hands, arms, of course. body yeah. as possible. You want not to have any tension anywhere. Yeah. You know, because you're not trying to kill your guitar. You know, mm-hmm. you, you, you want to be able to make the tones that you can make with the least amount of force. Yeah. And so at that point, I started using finger picks. I am using um, Dunlop Ultex. So that's what is on my thumb. This is a, a pro pick, the Rezo L large pick. Uh, I, I like the um, brass one, but I like the the, the multiple bands because uh, you can adjust you can adjust each of the bands separately, and it's just more comfortable. So I put these on, and, and once I once I get it kind of sat where I want it, I don't really notice it that much. You know. So anyway, I started to use finger picks. I started to learn how to use finger picks because the 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 only way that I could play that made sense was to play with the least amount of force. So my volume went completely away. You know, and my strength was. Gone. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, I've I've offered that advice to people who who actually use flat picks, but they use these flimsy flat picks, oh. and they're working so hard. Right. Right. And it's like. <laughs> The harder you work with a tool like that, the worse it even sounds. I mean, it's like totally right, right. a thin pick's gonna sound nice at a soft level, just like yeah. you know, if you're using the meat, it's got a nice sound at a quiet level. Quiet if you level. want to bring that thing up, all of a yeah. sudden you're like you're deadening the strings so much. And, and I think I think at the time that if I would have like switched to electric guitar at that time, oh sure, I might have had some success with that because. You know, you, you can play an electric guitar very quiet. I'm playing a 12 string and a resonator guitar. And with a 12 string with no picks on, you gotta get on it to get sound out of it. So I start using picks. And I did, you know, I had, oh, you should have seen the picks, my God. I bought all the picks. And at first, of course, it was super noisy because I didn't know where the pick was in the oh, world because I couldn't feel anything. I sound like hell with picks. I and they're like clacky so... and loud. Yeah. And as I got, better at control, mm-hmm. I found that I could get, especially with the 12 string, I could get a lot of clarity. I could get the the string sound that I wanted. And with a resonator guitar, um, I was finding that I can I could back off way, way off. I could get really, really light and relaxed and soft hand on the guitar. And with the picks, I could still get the resonators to run the way I wanted them yeah. to. And I think I think the secret going forward is to just keep doing, you know, certain exercises to keep the brain unaware of yeah. what you you're actually do. Stay doing. ahead of your brain. Stay ahead of the brain. You've had so many opportunities as a growing musician to fail. You have so much more practice in failure that when this new thing arises, it's like, okay, I know how to fail. Yeah. How can I win? That's the big thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And so this happened to me in 2008, let's say, somewhere in that world. Okay. You know, it's taken a lot of patience because it's never stopped. It's never, like, been something that I've been able to forget about. I think about it every single time <clears> I pick <throat> up the guitar. And I could think about it with a lot of anger. But that makes it worse. It makes it a lot worse. Okay. <laughs> it, it actually brings the symptoms out, you know. Right. Reacting to it with patience and creativity, yeah, which is harder. But I think in life generally, not just in my musical life, but in life generally, you know, having this issue has actually helped me in a lot of other ways. Mm-hmm. In 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 like, you know, uh, depression and anxiety. Finding creative solutions that are going to involve hard things like patience. Mm-hmm helps yeah it's the long way around but the long right. way is usually going to be the way that that works in the end yeah so it's interesting the the thing that gave you focal dystonia is also the thing that will help you through it 
this lifelong oh, yeah. thing you're well, learning yeah, how to do. I get yeah. it now because I am developing. I am evolving. Yeah. The music hasn't done anything. It's me that's yeah. evolving towards this mm-hmm. music. You know, it's like it's like um, it's like coming to a river. You know, it's easy to like step onto the bank and look at the river. It's a little bit harder to put your feet in the water because it might be cold or uncomfortable. And it's a lot harder to start walking into it. And it's really, really difficult to swim to the bottom in the middle, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And music Mm -hmm. feels like that to me sometimes. It feels like that river that has so many different, like, dimensions to it and levels and places that it's uncomfortable and dark and Mm -hmm. and really different, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's all music, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And it does... There is a current. And Mm -hmm. there's two ways to go through the river... I mean, just let the current take you. And you. But I feel like the musicians are swimming to the bottom <clears throat> at very particular yeah. times and then coming back up, mm-hmm. let it, let the river take them. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, it takes a could, lot of work. It's a lot of work. I'm not at the bottom of the river. I'm not even close. Is it there? I you know, know, I'm up to my knees maybe. <laughs> but but yeah. the thing about like the guitar and music is it never stops providing... Mm-hmm you know, opportunities to, to try to evolve. Um, and, and in a way, focal dystonia, as irritating and upsetting as it is, and continues to be, you know, every day, it's it's part of my evolution. So yeah, so I used to play rope stretch and blues. Um, I probably played it too fast. And, you know, uh, now I can get the same lick, which is this lick. By dropping my thumb down and using that instead of my other finger but my thumb used to not play much right or it would you know keep keep on that that a string right um now i'm gonna let the a string ring so i can get the lick and it doesn't sound like i'm missing a finger but i am so i can get th- i can get through the whole you know the whole riff without that finger the other thing that i started to do which is going to sound like a real cop out is doing kind of the singer songwriter thing of yeah. not playing the riff yeah. when i'm singing the verse cuz i used to do i used to play the riff all the time. i'd sing the verse play the riff along with my singing it's too much work now you know if i just like I caught a stranger in my house and I busted his head with a club. I caught a stranger in my house and busted his head with a club. I knocked him out cold and put his old heels all in a tub. The other, the other kind of lesson in evolution that I took away from all this is I can't play as fast as I used to play, but Maybe I don't want to do that anymore because, um, well, here's a good example. So Leo Kotke, right? Go back in time and listen to uh, Vaseline Machine Gun. It's outrageously fast. It's really intricate. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. I love it. The last time I saw Leo Kotke play, he played Vaseline Machine Gun. It's a lot slower, but it swings. It's funky. It's brilliant. It's as good as the fast one. It's not about speed. Speed right. is not the metric of how good you are. You know, it is something else. There's something else there. So instead of playing the lick fast, I started to, you know, and this, these are elemental lessons that I could have probably learned by taking stupid guitar lessons when I was a kid, but I didn't do that. So I'm learning these things at 56 years old, which is dumb. <laughs> I've known this, but I'm learning better now how to use dynamics to both, you know, mask the fact that I'm missing a finger and to uh, bring out things in the song that that I wasn't able to bring out before. Mm-hmm. So it, I do feel like it's forward evolution for me, mm-hmm. even though I can't do it another way. Yeah. Did you want to talk about yeah, my hand strap innovation? Resonator guitars have a hand strap. And it's there for a good reason. It's there so you you don't accidentally end up squashing your cone, or in this case, cones. So uh, the hand strap protects your cones from being 
destroyed. But they also stop you from doing any kind of palm muting unless you're moving up here, which is uncomfortable because then you know you lose that that line. You know your 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 right. straight arm line is lost now because you're having to accommodate this hand strap. Plus you're way up here now, which is a different sound. Totally different. You know, uh, you know, especially in a resonator That's guitar. You know, your your tones from back here to up here is is a wide range of different tones that you can get, which is great to have that access. But you can't get back here and do any kind of palm muting. So you take it off, put it there, and then you can you can do that. The problem is uh, many guitar makers, uh, resonator makers. Uh, I don't think they want to have this removable because if you leave it off, now your cones are vulnerable to getting squashed if you if you land on them hard or something hits them. So I just put Velcro on mine, and so I can I can replace this. You want? And now it's it's fine. Patent and I can I can still I can still play. the The idea of having a flat line on my arm is is so valuable to me I almost never play with the with the hand strap on the wow. guitar my thought here's my thought like in 1930 I think it was national kind of briefly came out with this this guitar with what was called a hooks on cover plate you would put the cover plate on and twist it slightly and it would hook into place and you put the one screw in to stop it from mm -hmm. twisting back and then you were done mm -hmm. that was it I wish that somebody in the guitar making world would make a hooks on style hand strap so you could just click this into place when you're not playing the guitar and when you want it off so you can do palm meeting you can unhook it and uh, set it aside. That's, that's my uh, that's my wish for yeah, the Luthery world. <laughs> oh and I stuffed the guitar with newspapers. <laughs> Get that in there. You should not be allowed to have a guitar. Par. <laughs> Who gave you that? <laughs> so I'm actually going to start selling um, resonator guitar paper. And so um, it's going to be called Rezo paper. And it is important that you use Rezo paper when stuffing your, your guitar. So um, that, that's patent pending, but uh, give me a call. Um, and actually, I have a whole bunch more videos with, with Charlie actually right there um and we actually did the spider john legacy series uh and that's right there so you could watch any of those next uh thanks for being here and uh yeah we'll see out we'll see out one of those thanks <laughs>